Welcome to Papa Junk Shop. Well, I got a tool post for my 12-inch uh, Craftsman lathe, that was lathe, whatever. And it's a Jensen, I think. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, well, I got Jensen. Huh? But I got four tool holders. Two of them are cutoffs, and two are just regular holders. So I got to have a boring bar holder. And so I thought I'd attempt to make a couple after seeing how expensive they were. And I got a hunk of metal in the damn saw cutting off now. Should be able to make two of them out of it. Works out well. I can make some. Uh, so we're about uh, 10 minutes into the cutoff, so it's going to take about 20 minutes it looks like. And I'll get that piece cleaned up and squared up and go to work on the rest of it. thought I'd use the old step-toe 14 inch shaper to uh, square this thing up. Probably be faster to do it on the mill, but I don't know, just something about the shaper. It's neat, fun to run. I think I got her set up pretty close. It's like, been a while since I run this, so probably screw up so.
just to get it cleaned up. And then, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to try to cut the, the groove in the shape or two or do that on the middle. Have to wait and see. Well, I got to working and forgot about the video on part. So I got all six sides of that cleaned up on the shaper, moved it over to the bridge port, decided the shaper wasn't going to be the right thing for doing this, so I got it in there roughing it out. Um, I'll take that down to the proper um, depth here, and then I'll widen it out. I got some layout lines, I don't know if you'll be able to see them or not, right there. So I'll move over each way once I get it to the right depth up to that line and then I'll change my cutter to uh, the angle for this and we'll do the angle and then I'll be able to uh, test fit the tool post right on here so that's the plan throw a little cut oil on there and we'll take another cut about 30,000 seats cut. Rather be safe than sorry. I'll just keep doing that until I get to the proper depth. Okay, got the slot the proper width and depth. Now I'm going to change the cutter out to uh, 60 degree. Looks a little bit light duty for this job, but I'm just going to have to take her easy because that's what I got. So I'll get that changed out and we'll get started on that.
So it looks like it's going to work. It's going to be a while. Of course, the deeper I get into it, the, the heavier the cut will be. So I'm going to stick with that 10,000 for now and uh, see how she works out. Seems like it's doing a good job. Got part way right through her. You can see the profile starting to form right there. We're about halfway up that depth of cut. And it's really nice finish, so I think we're good. Gonna keep plugging away at her. Well, I ran into a snag. This cutter wasn't deep enough this way. I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't. And I was thinking I had another bigger cutter someplace, and I finally did a search, and it was over in the drawer of my other little mill. And uh, I put the bigger cutter in, and I got this one size finished up. You can see the difference in the two. It's quite a difference. This one's got a long area for cutting. So I got one side done, and the other side started. And uh, Aaron thinks that we ought to go to Cherry Springs and do some stargazing tonight. So I guess that'll be it for today. We'll continue this project tomorrow. Well, I had another hiccup. I hit a hard spot in this piece of metal. And it took the edge off my cutter. So I guess I ruined that. So... I thought, what am I going to do now? So I remembered that uh, with that little lathe I just bought, I got these monster uh, cutters with uh, carbide inserts. And I know you're not supposed to use carbide on a shaper because it might chip it on the backstroke. But I'm not going to be able to use these for anything else, so I thought I'd give it a shot. So I got it set up in the shaper, try to finish this side up. And uh, that little bit of a hard spot doesn't seem to bother that carbide any. And I'm not making any downward cut, just over. So the tool isn't really picking up um, much. Well, it can't because it's down in that groove anyways. And I got the shaper on the slowest speed. And I'm taking just little itty bitty uh, amounts off. And I'm letting it do like two strokes before I move it to the next one so real gingerly working at it eventually I'm going to get this thing done snag the clapper box started clapping when I started making heavier cuts and it was causing some issues so I wound up taking a half inch bolt and putting it between the actual cutter and the stationary part of the ram and that stopped it from moving at all now I'm getting some better better cuts I'm getting getting near the end of her I think been a challenging project, at least for me. Yeah, I think I'm to the point where I want to give this tool post a, a try in there. Yeah, okay. Except this thing's in the way. Let's see, I think if I loosen this, 
push this ram back out of the way. Yep. Okay. Now, let's see if she'll... Get this thing in the right position. And, of course, now the... Oh, yeah. Yep. I can't work the handle all the way, but it does lock on. So I guess I finally made some progress. All right. Get her out of the vise and figure out what we're going to do next. Okay, I'm going to make them an inch and five eighths high. So I got some blue marking stuff on there. I'm just going to take my height gauge and put a line on there. Turn it over. Put a line on there. Now I'll put them in the bandsaw and uh, cut them off and I'll stay on the inside of the line. That'll leave me just a little piece and that might be just enough to make a Holder for a small boring bar. Sometimes you want to do some little ones. I think I got some that are like quarter inch. So it might be enough to make one of those. So I'll get two and possibly a third one out of there. Yeah, it looks like another half hour's worth of bands on. And I gotta make two cuts. Cutting off in the bandsaw, this tool post must have been special purpose because um, it's got this bracket, I guess you call it, with two bolt holes welded onto it. And uh, I'm going to hopefully take the uh, milling machine and clip those welds off there and pop that off. So they sure don't need that hanging over in my lathe in the way, and it would serve no purpose for me. Okay, I got the welds milled out down to hardly anything left. So, we'll see what happens when I give her a smack with a hammer. Must be really good welds. No, I cracked it. You can see it. Now we'll give the other one a few smacks. There we go. All right. Now it looks more normal. Just a little more cleaning up there. A little file work, I would think. Okay, I got the welds cleaned up. Looks more like a normal tool post now. And these are just right off the bandsaw. Lock on. Got plenty of meat this way. Not sure if I'm going to get rid of a little bit of that or, or leave it. And this is the little guy. Um, I put it on there. Lock it on. It, uh, I think that might be alright for a small board bar. One of those really little ones. Matter of fact, maybe I could make it hold two different ones. I could have a really little one out here and a bigger one in closer. Not sure. I have to look and see what I got. Could have one set of screws to lock it in place, come 
this way and the other one come in this way. I don't know, I'm just full of ideas, aren't I? Well, it was 30.9 degrees this morning. It's afternoon now, it's warmed up. Got some outside stuff to do, so not sure if I'll get any more done on this today or not. Because I got some outside stuff to do, so. Well, I decided to put them back in the mill and run the, uh, yeah, fly cutter over them. And cleaned them up a little bit. Made them look a little nicer. And uh, broke all the corners on the belt sander. So, I guess next we'll cut the groove in here for the uh, tool. Okay, put some blue dye on there. Got my uh, height gauge set for the center of this. I decided to go with the center. The original ones were off center just a little bit, but I stuck it on the lay there. It looks like center is going to be good, so I'm just going to go with center. So, scry the line on there. I'll turn it over and just see. Look at that. Same place. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> we'll do the other one too. And then. Uh, it's a 5 h groove. Mm, I didn't measure how deep it is yet. But it's not critical, so I'm just going to eyeball it on the mill for center. Okay, got her set up in the mill. Uh, I got a carbide cutter in case I run into one of them hard spots again. And I didn't eyeball it. I actually centered it. Figured as long as I was doing it, I might as well do it right. So... I'll go get the uh, three-phase converter on and we'll take a cut. There, we'll hand feed it. Just continue back and forth until we do the right step. This is the last cut. Taking 50 thousandths at a time. We'll get the other one there and do the same. Okay, number two is done. Well, the groove's done, put it that way. And I don't know why, but that one's a lot nicer than the other one. I did everything exactly the same. Same speed, same feed, same cutter, same cutting oil. But it's a lot 
can't hardly see any tool marks on this one. <laughs> Don't know. I guess the next we'll uh, either figure out where the screw goes here to adjust the height or else the uh, set screws to hold the tool in place. Okay, I got the uh, set screws and the height adjustment um, holes all marked out. Got one in the, just well, just like the original. Same size, 3 8 uh, set screws and 3 8 adjustment screw. So I got a center drill in there. I'm going to go ahead and center drill all in. Then I'm going to come back and go with a uh, 5 16 drill bit for 3 8 16 tap. <laughs> set screws in there they turn nice um, next is going to be this screw which I don't have any of it's got an Allen uh, takes an Allen wrench in the top so I'm going to have to find one of those and I'm going to have to make this and I decided that this little guy, I'm not sure this is going to have enough width this way to be real supportive, but I'm going to give it a shot. And I'm just going to use it, uh, I'm going to drill in half, half inch on this side and three eighths on this side. I got some boring bars which I use on the lathe, um, which I also use on my boring head. I think they'll work in there and I can just have the set screws along here. So half inch on one end, three eighths on the other. And uh, this hole for the uh, adjustment screw, if I'm going to use the one side I can just turn it over and transfer the screw up here. So if nothing else, if it doesn't work good for that I can turn it into an indicator holder or something. So I'm going to go to work on this next. Okay, making some progress with a little one for the boring bar. Got the set screws all in. One side bored out half inch, bored and reamed. Three eighths on the other side, bored and reamed. Got the hole tapped for the uh, adjustment screw. These are the boring bars I was talking about. This is a half inch one. That would slide in there. Set screws there, tighten it up. And this side is the <laughs> table's not level. This is the 3 8 side. And depending on which which way I'm using it, can have that 
in there. Take that out. Turn it over. Use it that way. So this be for light duty stuff. I might have to make another one for bigger boring bar with more surface here so it doesn't want to rock bind. So I guess I make uh, these and the uh, bolt that holds the tool post onto the cross feed. I have to make a T nut I guess you would call it for that and we'll be able to try her out. Okay, got the uh, piece for the T-nut cut out, got it drilled out, tapping it, 5 8 18. So I'm just going to do her by hand in the mill. So. Okay, got the T-nut done over here at the lathe that I haven't cleaned for a while. <clears throat> Had to put a couple of... Uh, flat spots here because the bolt is actually wider than the slot so fits in there like so and it'll drop right on there <clears throat> so next I gotta make that uh, knurled nut for the adjustment Okay, I'm going to attempt to make these pieces. I got a piece of stock in the lathe and took a skim coat off it and faced off the end. Got the knurling tool set up. And it's been a long time since I knurled. And I can't say that I ever knurled anything that I was really excited about how it turned out. So I don't expect to get much different results here. It'll probably have a rough surface on it, but I'm not going to guarantee it's going to be nice. So we'll give her a shot. Got the lathe on the lowest speed back gears. One isn't turning, I don't know. I had it centered on there. This is not a self centering one. Now, I think I'm Hitting on that now. Looked like I had clearance there, but apparently there's enough pressure on there that it's hitting. So I'll try a different center. Be right back. Okay, attempt number two. That must have been the problem. something. Now we're going to try something else. Okay, we'll try her again. We're going old school. Got the old tool post out and the old knurling tool with a self-centering part on it. That other one's the one that come with that tool post, which I don't think is too great. Here we go.
what the wifey wants me for something, so. Can't stop this now. I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> okay, see what that looks like, but I got to go find out what I did or didn't do. Well, I wasn't in trouble. My dinner's ready. And I think I'm happy with it. I mean, it's not really sticking up, but boy, you can get a nice grip on it. So I think I'm going to leave well enough alone. Now I'll have to slice this into three. Well, I'll do a whole... See, i got to have one that's uh, quarter twenty for the little one. And the other ones are 3 8 so I'll have to do the small one first, and then the other two. So, that'll be next. Well, got the hole tapped, drilled and tapped, and <clears throat> going to try slicing one off. Thought I might as well try out the new tool post, being I got a cutoff tool already. And everything else was done, so give her a shot. smoother than that. But maybe I shouldn't speak just yet. It doesn't cut off yet. Yep, there she goes. <laughs> Never fails. Now, <laughs> can't say as I'm uh, surprised. Well, I'm going to try her again. Got this back straightened up in the chuck because it always cocks it off a little bit when it does that. I'm going to take a little bit of a cut on this back side, give it a little more clearance, and then I'm going to move back over in the original spot and try it again.
too. Okay, I put a different cutoff tool in here. That was one that was in this holder when I got it. It looked all right, but there was another one that come along with it, so I thought I'd try it. Uh, third times, maybe a charm, I don't know. Seem right at all. Now I'm trying her again. Not making nice chips, but it is cutting. go through that two more times but did get her cut off okay I'm trying number two I moved the uh, piece back in the chuck a little bit farther so it'll be a little steadier and I resharpened the end of the cutoff tool even though it looked all right Get slow blade down one. One belt move. two more off of there with no problems. 
so apparently I must have did something right. Um, so they're pretty much all finished up. There's a little guy. There's one of the big ones. And just slip right on. Of course, these aren't adjusted yet. The little guy for the born bar, I guess he'd go back here. So, now I got uh, four regular tool holders, a boring bar tool holder, and two cutoff tools. So, <coughs> I might have to make another one for a full-size boring bar and uh, I keep my eye out for something that don't cost a fortune I guess. That's a lot of work making these things but it was kind of fun. So if you enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe. See you next time.